am one of the librarians here at Hart County Library, and welcome to another episode of Trivialized Horror. Uh, today's story comes from a collection of fairy tales and folk tales assembled by Ruth Manning Sanders. Uh, I've referred to Ms. Manning Sanders in another video that featured her book, uh, A Book of Ghosts and Goblins. This story is from my all-time favorite, A Book of Witches. It's a story from Ireland called The Black Stairs Mountain. I'll mention that there are other stories that I'd be very glad to share, but they're a little longer. Uh, and if you're enjoying these readings and would like to hear some more of the longer stories, uh, let us know on our Facebook page or email us at heartlibrarynews at yahoo.com. And now, The Black Stairs Mountain. Once upon a time, a poor widow and her granddaughter lived in a tiny house on the top of a hill. From the windows of this tiny house, you could see down into a green valley and across the valley to a great mountain called the Black Stairs. Witches lived on that mountain. So every night before they went to bed, the widow and her granddaughter did four things. This is what they did. First, they loosed the band that worked the spinning wheel and laid it on the wheel seat. Second, they emptied the washing water into a channel that ran under the house door. Third, they covered the burning turf on the hearth with ashes. Fourth, they took the broom and pushed the handle of it through the bolt socket of the house door where the bolt itself had long ago rusted away. And having done all that, they went to bed and slept soundly, knowing that the witches could not get in because the doing of these things formed a spell to keep the witches out. But one day, the widow and her granddaughter went to market to sell the linen thread they had spun. It was a wild, wild day and a wilder night. Coming home, they took shelter from a storm of rain under some trees, and by the time the rain had eased off a bit, it was night. They missed their way in the dark and didn't get home until very late. When they did get home, they were so weary that their one thought was to get to bed, and they forgot all about the doing of those four things they should have done to keep the witches out. Well, they ate us up, and they drank us up, and they were making to go to their beds when there were four loud bangs on the house door. They were making for the door then to see who was knocking when a voice screamed out of the night, and it was such an unholy scream that the widow and her granddaughter stood still in the middle of the kitchen and clutched each other in fear. Where are you, washing water? screamed the voice, and the washing water answered, I am here in the tub. Where are you, spinning wheel band? screamed the voice, and the wheel band answered, I am here, fast round the wheel as if it was spinning. Broom, where are you? screamed the voice, and the broom answered, I am here with my handle in the dustpan. Turf coal, where are you? screamed the voice. And the burning turf answered, I am here, blazing over the ashes. Then bang, 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 bang at the door again, and a score of hideous voices howled, washing water, wheel band, broom, and turf coal, let us in. The door flew open, in rushed a great company of witches, and in their midst, leaping and yelling, was old Nick himself with his red horns and his green tail. Pandemonium, witches all round them, whirling about the kitchen, whooping, bawling, yelling with laughter. The grandmother fell down in a faint, and there was a terrified granddaughter standing there now in the midst of a throng of jeering, ill-favored faces and skinny, waving arms with her poor old grandmother lying like a dead thing at her feet. Old Nick, with the red horns and the green tail, had seated himself on a stool by the fire. He had his hands to his nose, and he was pulling that nose in and out as if it were a trombone and making the most hideous music with it. The witches began to dance to the music, kicking up their heels, leaping till their heads cracked against the ceiling, upsetting the chairs, the table, the pots, the pans, the china, and the crocks. Smash went the widow's best china teapot. Smash, smash went cups and plates. Clitter, clatter, smash. Everything went tumbling off the dresser. The very dresser itself reeled and swayed and toppled sideways against the window, and the window panes fell out with a crash. Oh, what shall I do? What shall I do? thought the poor terrified granddaughter. Oh, if Granny should die, if this goes on until cockcrow, Granny will die. She will never live to see another day. I must do something, but what can I do? Then an idea came to her. It was as if a good fairy had put the idea into the little girl's head, and if a good fairy hadn't, then who did? The music that old Nick was making with his nose became more and more hideous. The dance of the witches became more and more furious, screaming with laughter. They leaped back and forth over the poor old grandmother stretched on the floor in her faint, but they were taking no notice of the girl. So holding her breath and a step at a time, the girl sidled her way toward the house door. The door was still open. The girl slipped through it and out into the night. What did she do then? She screamed with all her might, rushed back into the kitchen and shouted at the top of her voice, Granny, Granny, come out, the Black Stairs Mountains and the sky above it, it's all on fire. Instantly the music stopped and the dancing stopped. Old Nick made one leap through the window, the witches crowded out after him, some through the door, some through the window. Out into the night rose a great and terrible cry as with shrieks and lamentations, the witches rose into the air and sped away through the darkness toward their home on the Black Stairs Mountain. 
The shrieks and lamentations dwindled away into the distance, but the granddaughter hadn't waited one instant in listening to them. Directly, the last witch was out of the house. She snatched up the broom and clapped the handle of it through the sockets where the door bolt ought to be. Then she dragged the tub of washing water across the kitchen and emptied the water into the channel under the house door. Then she loosed the band of the spinning wheel and laid it on the wheel seat. At last, she raked the ashes in the hearth over the burning turf till not one red ember could be seen. Having done all that, she ran to her granny and brought her to her senses by dashing cold water in her face. The grandmother sat up. Is all quiet at last, she said. Yes, all is quiet, said the girl. But no, from out of the night now came a distant angry roaring, and the roaring grew nearer and nearer and louder and louder as the witches came whirling back from their home, furious at the trick the girl had played on them. The roar ended in a sudden silence, and then tap, 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 four quiet little knocks on the door. Washing water, let me in, came a wheedling, whispering voice. But the washing water answered, I can't. I am spilled into the channel under the door. I am trickling away around your feet, and my path is down to the valley. Spinning wheel band, will you let me in, came the wheedling voice. But the wheel band answered, I can't. I am lying loose on the wheel seat. Broom, let me in, whispered the wheedling voice. I can't, answered the broom. I am put here to bolt the door. Turf coal, turf coal, open to me, open urged the whispering, wheedling voice, and the turf answered, I can't, my head is smothered with ashes. And then came such a howling and cursing outside the door as made the widow and her granddaughter fall on their knees and cling together. But howl and curse as they might, the witches could not get in. They whirled away through the night at last, back to their home on the Black Stairs Mountain. The widow and her granddaughter had a job of it, putting their house to rights, but you may be sure after that night, never again did they go to their beds until they had loosed the spinning wheel band, emptied the washing water, piled ashes over the hot turf, and pushed the handle of the broom through the bolt sockets on the door. Thanks for listening.